In today's lesson, we will be talking about isotopes, relative atomic masses, and balancing of nuclear reactions. Those are the three main topics that we will be dealing with. First, we will go into isotopes. Before we define isotopes, we will look at the notations to represent elements in general. Here, E is the element. A represents mass number and Z represents the atomic number or number of protons in an atom. Mass number is the sum of the number of protons plus neutrons. Atomic number is the number of protons and E will be replaced by the symbol for the element. Here are two examples, carbon 612 and carbon 613. So you'll find that in these two examples, carbon has a mass number of 12 on the left and carbon has a mass number of 13 on the right. But the atomic numbers are the same. As long as the atomic numbers remain the same, they are the same element, but the mass numbers are different. So that's the difference between the two elements and these elements are called isotopes. A represents the sum of the number of protons and neutrons, Z represents the atomic number, the number of protons in an atom, and to calculate the number of neutrons, you can subtract Z from A. Mass number minus number of protons will give you number of neutrons. So in this case, we have calculated the number of neutrons for the two isotopes of carbon, which are carbon-12 and carbon-13. For carbon-12, the mass number is 12 because it has got six protons and six neutrons. When you calculate the number of neutrons, mass number minus atomic number is 12 minus six, which gives you 12, which gives you six. And on the right, you have carbon-13, where the mass number is 13 because it has 6 protons and 7 neutrons. Therefore, the number of neutrons will be 7. So we can calculate the number of neutrons in an isotope by using this method. Definition of an isotope. Atoms of an element that have the same atomic number but different mass numbers are called isotopes. Isotopes show similar chemical characteristics, but they may have slightly different physical properties. Here is an example, carbon-12 and carbon-13. This is how we represent isotopes. If you write the symbol of an element and put a number beside it, which is the mass number, we are implying that that, that particular element exists as an isotope. So carbon in this case we are saying there are two isotopes which is carbon-12 and carbon-13. Or uranium-235 and uranium-239 are the two isotopes of uranium. The number of neutrons in both of these are different. That's what we are implying by it. So we want to calculate the number of neutrons in the, in the two isotopes of uranium. Number of neutrons in uranium is A minus Z, which is A is 235 minus 92, which is equals to 143 neutrons. So for U235, you have 143 neutrons. You subtracted the atomic number from the mass number. Similarly, the number of neutrons in U239 is A minus Z, which is 239 minus 92 and 147. So you should be comfortable determining the number of neutrons from the isotopes and the atomic numbers for these elements can be obtained from a periodic table. Even though it's not stated here, we are talking about uranium. Uranium, the atomic number is 92 and that value will be obtained from the periodic table. Now we're going to look at a we, now we're going to take a quick look at how to read the information on the periodic table. So I've taken 
a single element in one of the boxes that you see in the periodic table. These are some of the information that you will find. Different periodic tables may have slightly different value, uh, different information, but generally speaking, all this information should be present in a good periodic table. The number one written at the top is usually the atomic number or the number of protons that are present in the element. Here the symbol of the element is written second, followed by the name of the symbol, in this case hydrogen. Next we write the electronic configuration based on the quantum mechanical model of the atom. And finally the number that is represented 1.008 is called the relative atomic mass or RAM. This is not a whole number, this is a fractional value. And we will see how we can calculate the relative atomic mass as we go along. Let's take another example. Here we have magnesium. The atomic number of magnesium is Z is 12. Name is, symbol is Mg. Name is magnesium. The electronic configuration is neon followed by 3s2. And finally, the relative atomic mass is 24.31. This is not a whole number, this is a mass based on a particular method for calculation. Now, if you are asked to determine the mass number for magnesium from the periodic table, this is what you need to do. You take the relative atomic mass, the last number, round it off to the next whole number. In this case, it will become 24. So you will find that the mass number is 24, which is almost double the atomic number. So you shouldn't get confused between atomic number is Z and mass number which is not shown on this table. Rather, we deduce it by rounding off the relative atomic mass. So in this case, atomic number is 12 and mass number is 24. Now we will look at relative atomic masses and what does it mean? Here we're going to introduce the term unified atomic mass U. Sometimes this is referred to as atomic mass unit. So again in this periodic table representation for magnesium we have the atomic number and the relative atomic mass. Relative atomic mass is the fractional value, the number at the bottom of the image on the right of this slide. It is the average of the masses of the different isotopes of the elements. What it means is magnesium, if it has more than one isotopes, we find out the different masses and average it out. That's what we mean by this statement. The elements that are present in the periodic table, a lot of them have isotopes, meaning they have the same element with different number of neutrons. And therefore, when you represent the element, we take the averages of the different isotopes that are present. Relative atomic mass for magnesium is 24.31 units. This mass is almost twice the value of the atomic number. To obtain the mass number, you will round off this number to 24, which will be the number of protons plus neutrons. Here we will define the atomic mass unit. The atomic mass unit, or U, or atomic mass unit AMU is defined as 1 by 12th mass of a C12 isotope of carbon. So if I take 100 atoms of carbon 12, we are looking at pure carbon, it's 100% carbon 12. We are taking one of those carbon atoms, dividing it into 12 parts, and one part is taken as the mass of this unit, and that is a reference unit. You consider this as U and come and compare all the other elements in the periodic table to this unit. And when you do that, most of the elements will be a fractional value. The relative atomic mass will be a fractional value. Two reasons for it. One, you're comparing it to a unit. Second, there are isotopes. The isotopes have different mass numbers, and the composition of the different isotopes will contribute to the fractional value in the relative atomic mass. Or we can say that magnesium is 24.31 times heavier than the unit U. Calculation of relative atomic masses, we're going to look at two examples here. 
Here's the problem. Find the relative atomic mass of boron. B represents boron. If the atomic mass of one isotope is 10, which means the mass number is 10, and the percentage composition is 19.9, .9, and the second isotope is boron 11, the information in the problem can be interpreted like this. If we have 100 grams of boron, boron 10 will be 19.9% and boron 11 will be 80.1%. 10 represents the mass number of boron and 11 represents the mass number of the isotope. So this is how you can calculate the relative atomic mass. Ram is equals to mass number of boron into 19.9 .9 by 100 plus mass number of boron 11 into 80.1 by 100. Or we can say Ram is equals to 10 into 19.9 .9 by 100 plus 11 into 80.1 by 100. The values for those fractions are Ram is equals to 1.99 unit plus 8.811 unit. So the total for the relative atomic mass of boron will be 10.801 units. Okay. That's how we will get the relative atomic mass of boron 10.801 units or we can also express it as 10.801 grams per mole. When you learn moles it becomes clearer what it, why we do that. Okay. So that's how we solve the problem.